Hi everyone, I got Copilot to basically complete an issue for me and it's actually really, really cool. So I wanted to show you what it did and I did not record my screen during this process. So basically I'm just gonna walk you through what just happened and maybe next time I'll record my screen because it's super cool, I'm super impressed. Um, so I basically have two blog posts that I wrote and a podcast that I was featured on and I wanna add that to my site. And it's basically just about going into the next content folder, creating all that metadata and stuff. It's a little bit kind of, uh, you know, mundane work. So I just went, Copilot, just do it for me. Um, I went over to here and assign, and I signed Copilot, and these eyes come up to say that Copilot is looking and starting um, its job. And then it went ahead and create a pull request. So let's just go to the pull request here. Um, and I want to just kind of walk through it. So I basically added in um, the content in the content folder, the blog, uh, the two blogs in the podcast. And then it added some other stuff, um, content resources too. I didn't know what that was and something to get ignore. Um, and then what I can do is I can actually go along and have a look at here. So in Copilot started the work, there's a button here called view session. And if I click on this, um, I was monitoring this as it's happening. So as it was happening, basically what Copilot was doing was, and look, it took 10 minutes, right? Uh, so it tells you the whole, how long it took, etc. So um, it looked at the repository, looked at the content folder, looked at the blog content, the podcast. I had to like really like figure out what was going on because I gave it nothing, uh, just a link. Um, it looked at the structure of the existing blog post and podcast to understand, um, viewed the content. It checked the current styles by running the build to understand the project structure, uh, run some commands here, npm run build. The build was successful. Um, and then it can't access the external links with the information provided in the issue description. So it's going to create the content based on existing patterns in the repository. So that was a mistake on my part that I was, it wasn't able to open this. I should have put in, um, MCP, um, for playwright or something that would have been able to, to do that. So anyway, um, it had to make up some stuff because I didn't give it enough permissions to do stuff. Uh, so out of the blog posts and the podcasts and some other stuff here, but they get ignore. It cleaned up the build artifacts, um, blog posts here, it added this resources to, or updated this resources to that probably is in there that I don't know why it's there. I'll figure it out one day. <laughs> um, and again, a lot of more stuff, right? So I'm, I'm literally just going blah, 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 blah. But this is basically what was going on. Um, and you can see it successfully um, added, it pushed it. And then it gave me a whole review of what it did with all these kind of like check, 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 check. Now I came back on it and said like, oh, what is this, um, you know, to do thing? Can you remove it? And then it went ahead and it removed that for me. Um, analyze the request. I don't know if I found in my previous comment, I had modified this uh, instead of keeping the generic various posted devs to text. Um, so it went ahead and made those changes. And um, then I asked to do something else. Um, and I think it was a test that failed. Uh, yeah, so this was the test that failed. So let me show you what happened. If I go back to the pull requests. Um, now this is really cool. This is me and me and Copilot just having a full on chat. I'm like, um, and I added some, some changes as well. Copilot didn't have access to the dates of the, um, uh, from the podcast or from the blog post. So I had to go and modify that manually. Again, I probably could have used the Playwright MCP here and said, go and open that and check and get the information that you need, but I did not. So I manually just checked it, changed it. Um, so I had, I put here, remove the resources, and then it went ahead and did that. And then I modified these files it's myself. And I can see that my test started to fail. Um, and Copilot then said, hey, like I've just modified this and I removed it. Copilot requested a review, uh, finished the work. Um, I marked it ready for review. And then I kind of saw these tags and I only use the tags that are already available and don't add images for the blog post because we don't have any images available. So it did make up some images. I'm like, no, I don't have those images. They don't exist, so remove them. So Copilot went ahead and did that. Um, and then it updated the tags to use only existing ones, playwright and testing, nice. Probably should add an MCP one now that I'm doing some MP MCP stuff, but we don't have those tags yet. So let's not add it in this pure. Um, so then I said, tests are failing. Can you use this line instead? So locator is more unique in the home spec.ts file. 
Now we didn't change anything in the home spec file, but it seems to be failing. And my whole pull requests are failing because of this. And you might say, how did you know to just tell it to do that? I mean, like, I'm just giving it clear instructions here. I could have went in and modified this files myself, but I was like, oh, I was literally about to have a sandwich. So I was like, hey, this is the fix, uh, go do it. And I went off, I had my sandwich and I came back and it did it. Um, and it's very cool because it um, has the whole session here where it basically shows you uh, everything, the whole test. And it was able to, I can see the issue on line 10 and making it level one to make it more unique. So it's even kind of like telling me, um, first run the test to see the current failure and uh, it goes ahead and does everything, makes those changes and uh, checks that it's all okay, right? Um, and here, update the test locator. And this is exactly what it did. And that little kind of at the bottom, you know, adding the level one parameter to specifically target H1 headings. Now, what's really cool here, and you might say, but how did you find this information? That's so important to know. And I'll show you basically um, how I did it. I basically went into the tests that were failing. I can't actually access them now because they're not, oh, I can actually, yes, yes, I can. So here, the test is failing, right? So I get the details. Um, so this was the run where the test failed. And because I have um, merge reports, I have the HTML report merged into one. These are sharding. Um, so I've got these four shards and they all report into this one. And this is the merge into HTML report and the upload HTML report. Then I can click on this and I can literally um, artifact download and click on the download URL. And it will basically download that for me. And then I can go ahead and open it. And I've already opened it here, so I'll just do that. And this was basically my test. Now, this is the cool thing, right? Because we have, um, now this is a little, a little error that we'll um, have to fix, but let me just do something something magical um, while we fix um, this. So this is just a little bit of um, error on in the HTML report. We'll just do error. Uh, so the copy prompt button, which normally you should see, we have a little mistake there, but don't worry. Um, the copy prompt button here, uh, if I click on that, I'm able to then go into VS Code um, and open VS Code, which I have here. And let me just clean this up. So I'll just run through this again. Um, and I can just paste that in there and just ask agent mode to basically just run that. And that's basically what it did. It just basically then came up with um, the fix for that test which I was then able to go ahead and put in that pull request uh, and say, you know, this is the uh, this is the line you need to do. So that was just me doing a little bit of manual thing through the copy prompt button, take it in there and, and fix that. Um, and then it updated the test locator to be more specific and my test passed and I can go ahead and just merge that pull request. So you might say uh, there was about an hour's work all in all just to add, um, a couple of things to fix the test. And you might say, oh my God, it's so much faster, just go in and modify the files yourself. And it probably is, but to be honest, it's such a mundane task. I'm just like, I just don't really wanna do that. Um, plus also while Copilot was doing its stuff, I was actually doing other stuff. I was able to go off and have a sandwich. I was also like um, checking some other work stuff and things were happening while it was doing those tasks for me. And that's, that's the power of the agent working for you. Um, Copilot signing it an issue means it's like, take this away from me, but I'll keep checking over. Do keep checking over things, making some minor edits and changes and guiding it along the way. Give it better prompts. I did. I gave it a terrible um, prompt. I should have like really helped it out and given it some more information, but I didn't. Um, it was still able to do a good job. So I think that's really cool. I'm going to play around this a little bit more and um, come up with some more stuff and give it some more stuff and see how it goes. I'll create a video um, soon on what I do next with it. Uh, but definitely give it a try and start assigning a Copilot, your AI pair programmer, to your issues. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone.